So Battletech is undoubtedly a game about mechs. They're on the cover of every rulebook and all of the basic rules are always concern mechs. But when I was looking into getting into Battletech, uh, I was very excited by the idea of, of using combined arms. Maybe it has to do with the fact that uh, the last minis I painted before Battletech, like 15 years ago, were some epic 40k orcs. Uh, I just really like painting 6mm infantry and tanks. It just was a very different challenge uh, compared to painting full-size orcs for 40k. So um, when I discovered Death Ray Design's uh, awesome models for infantry and, and other stuff like vehicles, I knew I had to get some of that stuff. This is the start of a short sort of a series. Uh, I'll be looking at, at Death Ray Design's uh, tank models here. This time I've got the Herbold medium transport tank comes in a two pack, two pack as you can see and the Myers heavy tank a chunkier boy here but you only get one of them. We will be taking a closer look at these models. So here is the Herbold medium transport tank. As you can see the turret is separate so maybe you can glue it into your uh, choice of position here or maybe you can even just leave it separate so if your tank takes a hit and the turret is out, you can just take it off, show your damaged tank is still still around. Now, um, Battletech doesn't really have that many transport tanks to go around. Of course, you can always design your own, but many of the Death Ray Designs uh, products are supposed to resemble something in the Battletech catalog, so to say. Uh, this is the Goblin transport tank. Not the first one, but Goblin 2 infantry support vehicle. As you can see here, we've got a bigger gun, uh, a smaller gun, and a missile pack. This would uh, resemble the kit that the Goblin 2 tank does have. However, of course, Battletech is a very miniature agnostic game, so you can, you can pretty much use it as anything. I think from the size and the armament, maybe you could say it's a tiger or a rommel or maybe even a manticore if you if you're so inclined. I think it's just a really nice model with the asymmetrical turret here. Um, many of the other tank models are perhaps a little bit more uh, traditional, so they have the turret set up like like you got the main gun in the middle here and then some stuff around it or maybe above it but I just really like uh, this asymmetrical turret and here is the other tank the Myers heavy tank as you can see it's got three uh, main guns here on the turret again the turret is of course separate you can glue it on or leave it separate I think this would resemble mostly a PPC carrier like like the Shrek PPC carrier or perhaps a Burke or perhaps the Alicorn. Now the model compared to the Herbold here which is resembles a Goblin which is a 40 ton uh, tank. The Myers is a lot bigger as you can see. Well as it happens those three tanks I mentioned the Shrek and the Alicorn and the Burke are all a bigger tanks. Um, the uh, Burke I think is 75 tons, uh, the Shrek is 80 and the Alicorn is a mighty 95 tons. So you do need a bigger bigger model for this. I really do like this model. It looks pretty powerful. I will be showing this and the Herbold. When, when I painted them I'll be showing them next to some mechs and some infantry so you can get an idea of the scale of these things. And here we are sometime later with some finished tanks. As you can see, I decided to go with like a generic camouflage style for these tanks. If you watch my previous video on, on my mech force at this point, uh, they're more like parade colors. They're like black and gold and white and red. The idea is for the mechs to stand out on the battlefield. For my vehicles, I was thinking I want them to be sort of generic because I eventually want to play games where maybe it's like a local militia defending a city or like a base or whatever. And maybe they don't have access to mechs, but they do have access to tanks because they're much cheaper. So 
I want these tanks to go with pretty much any sort of force I might, might want to field. It's a pretty basic uh, process here. Brown undercoat with some off-white stripes, then a strong tone wash and some edge highlights with, uh, with a dry brush. Um, white for the missile packs, yellow for the lights. And I decided to try something sort of new for me for the uh, cannons here. This is supposed to be like a large laser, so it's going to get very hot. So I decided to sort of heavily dry brush the tip here and sort of have less and less of it as it goes on. So it looks like the very tip of it is very hot. I, I do like the effect. That's the Herbold transport tank. For the Myers heavy tank, I decided to go with uh, sort of an orange yellowish uh, window. And the PPCs here sort of used a similar, uh, similar style to the Canon here, but it's the uh, these stripes here, like these parts here that have like the white start, uh, white stuff here and less and less of it as it goes on and maybe a little bit of a brighter metal as it goes on. I think it looks, looks all right. What I might end up doing is base them, but most definitely I will be adding some mud onto the tracks and, and the sides here. What I use for my bases is this stuff, the AK uh, splatter effects wet ground diorama paint stuff. I was actually supposed to buy something else, but I grabbed this. But, you know, it works for bases. It's suppo supposed to be for uh, splatter effects, like, you know, adding onto tracks and stuff, but it works great on a base. So I might add this to the tanks here. Now, as for what these tanks look like next to other units, here are Death Ray Design's own standard infantry units as well as their uh, SRM infantry. I'm not a military expert or anything, but I do think modern tanks are, are a little bit smaller, but of course these are future tanks uh, in the year 3000 or whatever, so maybe they're allowed to be a little bit bigger. But I do think the scale works perfectly for Death Ray Design's own style. Like the hatch here for uh, the personnel inside the tank seems like it would fit a normal guy by death ray designs super well the myers heavy tank is of course a lot bigger but it is a huge tank now when i was looking into getting some death ray designs tanks i watched a lot of videos um, tried to find information on them pretty much the only thing i found was wargamer fritz I'll link to his very good channel uh, down below. He was showing off some of those vehicles and I think someone mentioned that although the models are very nice, which I agree with, the scale is a little bit off. The, the uh, tanks and, and stuff are a little bit too big in someone's opinion. I, I, can, I can sort of see that. Um, for example, the Myers heavy tank barely fits onto a hex. So it is very big. But what I was thinking is if you compare these models to the Catalyst Game Labs designs, the new designs of mechs, the scale feels right, in my opinion. For example, the Goblin tank, which the Herbal very much resembles, is 40 tons, and so is the Blackjack. I think the Herbal looks like a 40 ton tank next to a Blackjack. So. If the Myers tank is supposed to be a, a Shrek PPC carrier, that's an 80 ton tank. You know what else is 80 tons? Well, an awesome. <clears throat> I would say that next to the awesome, it's not difficult to believe that this tank is also 80 tons. It is a huge tank. It's a massive tank in this world. So, I do think the scale works. Of course, you'll be the judge if you want these uh, models. I really do like them. And I will be making more videos on Death Ray Design stuff later. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.